<laughs> my favourite, <laughs> my favourite cricket ground is uh, over at Linton, Linton, Linton and Lim- Limmouth. Right, uh, yep. Gosh, absolutely extraordinary. Valley of the Rocks. As Mahmood bounds in quite quick, about 85 miles an hour, bowls and squares the batsman up, um, playing it off the back foot, backward defensive stroke, and it dribbles back to the bowler who feels. The, um, uh, the, the, the pavilion at Linton Cricket Club was sadly mm. vandalised and burned to the ground some 10 years or so ago. They've had it That's rebuilt. Me as a result of a substantial lottery win. And also, I think there was the Colin and Darcy had a contribution to make. Um, it's a lovely little ground. It's a tiny little ground, very easy hitting sixes on, very slow track. Mm. And you've got the hills in the background, and it's your side screen. Mahmood, again, comes in quite running quite close to the umpire and reaches the, ba- the umpire and bowls. Oh, That's hello. forced away on the offside, and it's misfielded at cover. It was awkward bounce. It was a nice uh, drive. Uh, from Hildreth, but uh, the ball bubbled as it got to the fielder um, who misfielded that, and uh, it went away for a couple of runs, and that was Croft there at cover, so uh, that was um, unfortunate for him, just what you want to smack on the on the uh, hand in this cold weather, so that must be stinging a little bit. As it did he leap up, didn't it? It, it did, did, yeah. Under the chin, didn't it? It's, um, it did. Um, n- not a good fielding day, is it? Let's face no, it. No, it's very much... Uh, Mahmood once again bounding in quite quick um, bowls and that's on the leg stump and he forces away for a quick single the man runs in for mid on shies at the stumps but misses them and that's going to go away for overthrows it hits the batsman actually which is Hildreth and uh, um, I, Compton I believe but he's he's okay as they've not took overthrows that's unusual yeah, I'm not quite sure I would have thought what, that uh, yeah, they I, would have done that see, because the, the batsman was in no way attempting to prevent the ball hitting the stumps he was he was simply uh, trying to get to the other end of the ball, hit him, and almost ran away for leg by. I'm not quite sure whether morally you're actually allowed you know, to run. I, 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 I mean, as long as he's not deemed to have been deliberate, um, but he chose not to run. I think he was in some pain, and still is. Yeah. Mahmoud is ready to bowl already, and come to yes. had a chance to rub the rub the elbow wherever it struck him. Um, but I, I like their purposeful approach. They're a kiss of death, I'm sure. But Hildreth playing particularly well, and mm. they're playing with purpose and precision. And I think that's good to see. Trying to keep that scoreboard ticking over. Good, graceful players as well. Fine players, very attractive to watch. As Mahmoud bowls and he oh. cuts, but it's mistimed and bounces down into the turf and uh, bubbles over to the length, but probably not short enough perhaps to to try and pull away. And he went back to pull it and uh, mistimed it and uh, went over there to mid-on. I was looking at the boundary. Um, I thought he disposed of it through mid-wicket. It Um, was an attractive-looking stroke, but uh, not quite what he would have intended was the result, but at least it didn't go to hand as a big sway- load of seagulls swoop over the ground in the background of Compton who goes back and forces that away on the leg side and uh, that's a no ball and they're going for two, the fielder's running in from the boundary square leg but feels it well and uh, there's a clap in the background as well, good piece of fielding and Compton came back for two and there's the no ball as uh, Sajid Mahmood ruefully walks towards the umpire and uh, Kick, looks at the turf and uh, makes his mark and looks slightly skyward, but as if he's most uh, offended by that uh, that slight on his uh, his bowling. Getting a bit darker too, isn't it? It is. It's very dark out there. One must admit it wouldn't be wouldn't be uh, what one would really want to be batting in. It is quite dark and Mahmood's quite quick, about 88 perhaps, as he bowls and he bowls a bouncer which won't help things and uh, Compton has nothing to do with it just bounds his head and it balloons over to the keeper. So it might be a good idea to bring on, uh, is it Kerrigan uh, the, the yep. uh, spinner who apparently is, yep. um, is quite a uh, exciting prospect. And They're both uh, very fine bowlers. Indeed. You know, it's interesting looking at that bouncer from side in the mood. It's quite a good bouncer, quite a quick mm. bouncer. But uh, the one for the over, it's an awful shame when you think in years gone by you could bowl two or three. I mean, obviously, you can't bowl four, five, or six, but yes. it's just a shame that that particular piece of armour is. No again. Yeah, bowls, and that's outside the off stump, and uh, he leaves that alone. I couldn't agree more. When I mean, you think of the great West Indian fast bowlers um, peppering the batsman, it may have. The rights and wrongs of that, are, you know, is down to opinion. Um, but but they were tremendous, um, you know, tremendous sights. Those past bowlers, and, and uh, even though it was very tough for the batsmen involved, it was enthralling, thrilling stuff as a spectator. And one does miss uh, miss miss it, particularly in the case of the West Indies, uh, when you have someone like Bishop and Walsh and Ambrose and Patterson running in, and in generation before that you had Garner and Marshall holding Croft running in and bowling, as you say, three, four short deliveries. Um, well, of course, strangely enough, the, uh, uh, 
we, we've actually got a change in the bowling attack from the river and we've got, we've got Luke Proctor coming on. Right. Which, uh, Brian Close was interviewed in the, in the Whitton Cricketer a couple of months ago and he, was, uh, he made reference to facing Hall and Griffiths in uh, West Hall particularly in 1963. Yes, uh, of course, right. very famous um, summer with regard to, um, not least for Colin Cowdery, um, <laughs> and um, the old no ball rule. And he was saying that under the, the terms of the old no ball... It's the back rule, foot, wasn't it? West Hall wasn't bowling at 94 miles an hour. In his opinion, he was nearer 104. This is what Co- Brian Close was saying. Well. No helmet, no limitation on bounces per over, no side screens, uh, no protection. Oh, and that's driven away to Point, who feels that very well, actually. And uh, that was a good uh, good piece of fielding. Um, and uh, it, what an ugly action Proctor's got, actually. It reminds me a little bit of um, M- Mike Proctor, his namesake. Um, it's sort of a slingy kind of action, a little bit like, um, for those old enough to remember, or have looked at old footage, Lance Cairns. It's quite open, and that's outside the off stump and left alone. And uh, there's no run by, by Hildreth. Not bowling off the wrong foot, though, I don't think. No, but he's got a sort of open action and that the uh, arm sort of comes over as if it's uh, almost an afterthought. It's an unusual... A whirling dervish, right? Indeed, <laughs> yes, yeah, unusual. But it, such is life. It's, it's wonderful to see people with different uh, techniques with the bat and different different ways of bowling. It's all part of the fun as he bowls again and beats him with a beauty outside the off stump. Lovely delivery. Actually, um, he's quite a short way. He's, he's, he, and, if you look uh, yes. at him carefully, Ben, if you mm. you know just just look at him carefully running him, mm. cause he's quite short and he has this. He, he's any I, I would say he's pacey. He's not, but he's any pace he has mm. derives from the speed at which he brings his arm over. And I think he's, if you look at the way he bowls, that he sort of scurries in. He's not unlike Malcolm Denzel Marshall. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> wow. And he bowls again. And that's on the off stump and nicely played there. Yes, the thing about... Tad um, Slower. Yes, yeah, Tad Slower. The thing about Malcolm Marshall, and um, I, though he always did look pretty quick, to be honest, but the f- funny thing with Kemal Roach, who's, um, uh, well, I think he could end up one of the best fast bowlers in the world. I mean, he's a real talent, but he only runs in from uh, probably the same sort of run-up as this chap. But he's sort of 90-plus... Kemal Roach, but he seems to jog in. Quite extraordinary, really. As, uh, again, that's cut away, and it's nicely stopped again uh, by that fielder at point who dives across. There's only two slips. and um, Hit that very well. Hit that bit. Yeah, it was a lovely stroke. Went back, and fo- lovely cut stroke, flowing, uh, went away. And Luke Proctor, um, so far, has had everything in a pretty good spot, but there has been a couple of strokes that you would have said if it wasn't for point or either s- few yards either side of point would have gone for four runs um, as Proctor comes in again. Not a long run-up. Arms come over, flailing as he bowls, and that's down the leg side. Batsman goes to flick it away. The leg glance, but uh, it doesn't connect, and it's taken by the wicketkeeper and all the fielders. Um, all swarm in for the next over. So that's uh, the end of the over, and the score is 44 for two um, after 21 overs. Hildreth is on eight, Compton on 13. Yes, they've, they've both batted. I, mean, I shouldn't say these things, of course, but because uh, one is always tempting disaster, courting disaster, but they both batted with great assurance. Um, Hildreth looked very positive, very purposeful, um, and lucky not to have penetrated the inner ring with one or two sizzling square cuts that have gone straight to hand. Um, and um, maybe we should be grateful for 44 for two as Sergeant Mahmood resumes from the old Pavilion end past umpire Bainton. And that's short and it's not played at all well. Compton chastises himself as he attempted to force it off the back foot to a ball that was m- appreciably wider than many others that have been left alone today. So he realised it was just a little, you know... Um, Small error of judgment, a, a blip in the human psyche as the ball is returned around the field. The field is looking cold. Starting my mood, looking jolly warm, actually. Um, mm. Quantocks are very visible here. Um, the, 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 it's no darker than it was. In fact, it's fractionally brighter now. The crowd's mm. a little higher. Th- I think mm. he was about to embark on an ex- executing an extra cover drive on the back foot, but then uh, chose not to allow the ball to pass to cross, and there's no run scored. The score remains at 44 for two at the end of the 22nd. And over, it's two and over. It's Hildreth is on eight, and uh, the grandson of Dennis Charles Scott Compton is on 13. Well, yes, I mean, when, when you, you come to what you were just explaining there, it may, sort of took my mind 
rather different, of course, but I was watching the test series um, the other day and uh, Carlton Bohr, the um, wicketkeeper, was, was out to a rather rash stroke, but uh, he would have known his fate when it comes to the upcoming tour before he went out to bat, i.e. he wasn't even picked. And so that can't be good knowing you're not going to be picked before you go out to bat, really. It's, uh, I quite not agree. Good. As Proctor bowls the next delivery, first of his new over to um, James Hildreth, it is actually a half volley, but it's <laughs> wide enough outside of stump to induce an error mm. in the execution of the shot. It's played off the front foot and off drive, only as far as mid-off, and there's no run. And looking at Proctor here, actually, in some ways, he reminds me of well, David Capel when he bowls. Yes, now, there's yes. a man who should have played far, far, Went far on that 89-92 of the Caribbean, of course. When and there was uh, a great moment when we could have won a particular test match when he and, I can't think of it was, was batting with him, and they were called off a bad light as Proctor yeah. bowls <laughs> yeah. delivery, fully in length, on the legs. That's beautifully played. That's a shot of real authority. That's a lovely That's stroke. a super strike from James Hildreth. That's taken a pedigree stroke. Between mid-wicket and mid-on, four runs, it crashes into the pedigree. Indeed. Sideways. It's a pedigree, a pedigree stroke, stroke, really. A pedigree batsman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say it was a pedigree, st a pedigree stroke chum. Um, <laughs> free advertising there. <laughs> <laughs> pedigree top chum. I don't know about that, but uh, top breeders recommend it because it's, <laughs> it's a solid stroke. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it means that his score now rattles up to twelve. Uh, he's feeling very avaricious because he's almost caught Mr. Compton up, and I'm sure he might get a bit of a hangdog expression as a bowl in a minute. <laughs> but, uh, right, yes, as uh, next delivery is oh, well, oh. hit him in the midriff too high for an LBW decision yeah. to be considered, and there's no run that came back at him. Hit him mm. in, the, in the midriff, there was a, a, well, a funny. quarter appeal. But um, funny when you were describing about sight screens years ago, and we were talking about the back foot rule with with no balls. Another another thing was the state of wickets, uncovered wickets. I was reading the fate of a a Victorian cricketer who um, actually died two days after getting hit on the head at Lords. And uh, my goodness, batting then. In fact, he made a makeshift helmet with a load of towels, would you believe? It's back in the 1870s. <laughs> Proctor posed the next delivery and is out towards uh, extra cover. No run is resulting from that extra cover. Must the, have uh, looked a rather comical <laughs> sight, having towels uh, wrapped around his head, rather like... Um, well, Wasn't it Harbour Joe? No, I, was gonna, <laughs> I didn't want to be politically incorrect and say anything <laughs> of that nature. Um, but um, <laughs> the, um, it's interesting. I, mean, I, I, I played with a, a gentleman who... A chap called Chris England, who played in the Berkshire League, and about mm. ten years ago he was playing on a dreadful wicket, bowling against Phil Simmons, and, and, Phil and poor, Simmons. poor guy couldn't play him, couldn't play him at all, um, as the next delivery is cut, a bit under edged, under edged, and bounces once before it goes through um, off the under edge to the keeper, and there's no run scored. Very fortuitous. Well, Phil Simmons uh, survival. Phil Simmons, of course, nearly got killed, didn't he? he was hit on the head by his fellow West Indian, um, who, Sid Lawrence, the Gloucester bowler, back in the late 80s, and uh, um, in fact, was very, very nearly died, didn't he, on the way to hospital? Yes, he did. Because um, um, poor old Raman Lumber, you mentioned helmets, Raman Lumber, who played for India, of course, in the 80s, died at short leg. Um, he was hit Gosh. as the next delivery is played in defence by Hildreth, and there's no run. Poor chap, how um, dreadful. No, he was playing in a... In Will a Slack, who, of course, well, he, coached he had, me when I was a child. Yeah, he, had a, he had a blood disorder. He'd, he'd collapsed several times inexplicably during county games in the 1988 mm -hmm. season. But Raman Lumba um, was playing in a, in a, in a uh, first-class game and uh, coming towards the end of a, a f uh, the, the lunch interval, prior to the lunch interval being taken, mm. was placed in the short leg position and chose only to take a helmet. He was advised to take a helmet, two balls remaining before the, the, the session, and then he was struck by a full-blooded pull and died. It was dreadful business. Um, That's very nice. I can also remember mm. seeing, uh, in the early days of helmets, uh, uh, Malcolm Nash, Having a ball is that hit. the bowler that, that yep. bowled to Gary Sobers yep. the six sixes? A, a ball was hit between the visor and it got stuck between the visor and the, and, and, and the nose and knocked his nose back into his head. As the next delivery, York Tim. Oh, oh my goodness, it. is that close? Oh. My goodness me, that looked absolutely plumb. That was a beautiful did. Yorker. That did look out. I'm from afraid. From Sergeant Mahmood, unless he got an inside edge, because that was absolutely bang on middle and middle and off stump. York delivery right into Compton's boot and. Uh, uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything as plumb as that from this commentary box for not for some time. Well, it was a, we've got a very good view, we ought to explain, straight that down the wicket. Unless and, you've got uh, an inside edge, I can't think how on earth that wasn't given out. That was absolutely well, plumb as can be, really. Um, um, but Mahmood is very phlegmatic. He's gone back to his mark without yes, no. reprimanding anyone, at least of all himself, as the bowl next delivery is full in length and played with soft hands, angled back out to the man at the gully region, who is at Royal Prince, who looks absolutely mortified with cold, as any South African player in this country <laughs> would be at this time of year, rubbers the ball on his derriere and uh, it resumes its way around the, um, around the circuit as, as, as Carl Hogg, who's now fielded it mid-off, um, practices his left-handed... Um, golf swing, which I suppose is indicative of what he thinks he can do tomorrow if it rains. 
Uh, anyway, it's going to be uh, Mahmoud again from the Old Pavilion End past umpire Benton Bowling to Compton. It's shorter, shorter in length, still relatively full, but he plays with soft hands with an angled bat out towards mid wicket and manages to execute a well run single, which is all grist to the mill. It means the score is now. Uh, uh, extended to 49, 49 for, two. for two. Campton uh, is now on 14, Hildreth on 12. The partnership has realised 21 runs, uh, mm. and it's been tough going, but of course one would always expected that to have been the case given the immediate conditions, both over foot and indeed under foot, as uh, Mahmoud quickly back to his mark for a tall, fast bowler who has a reasonably lengthy run, bowls an extra, but that is short. And my oh, goodness me, it's, inside it's short and it's pulled, and it's pulled off the inside edge and um, goes absolutely nowhere bar the man at short square leg, or shortish square leg. It was a pull shot intent to be disposed of between mid-off and mid-wicket. More like a sort of short arm jab, actually. Mm, Quite mm. surprised to see um, James Hildreth um, uh, executing a shot which had a degree of impatience about yeah, it. It's the sort of stroke um, that Peter Willey used to play. Oh, kind of my goodness. Really, yes, bottom-handed, short-arm jab, but he used to whistle, they used to whistle oh, off to the boundary, didn't they? Off of those shots ahead in the 81, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Now, that's, that's another interesting question I'll put to you in a moment. As, mm, um, something about umpires you want to ask. Ben, absolutely. Sergeant well. Mamou both the next mm. delivery, and it's good in length, and it's oh. played in defence by Hildreth, not convincingly, back to the bowler, and there's no run, because he had such an enormous forearms. Men mm, with like great hands. forearms. John Edrich, you know, a four yeah. arms eleven. John Edrich, four Peter Willey, <laughs> Graham Hick, you know, Modassa Nazar. What about Greenwich? Um, he was pretty chunky, wasn't he? Well, Modassa Nazar, I think, because he, he was quite short, he had these huge forearms. And uh, My favourite ever puller and cutter of the ball is, of all time is probably Gordon Greenwich. Oh, he, absolutely. He and, he and Robin Smith, the greatest square mm. cutters the world has ever seen. It's the next delivery from Sergeant Ramu to James Hildreth. And it's short, and it's hooked, and it's hooked oh. magnificently. It's in the air, though. It's in front of square. He had a lot of time to hook that. That was short. I think he rather preempted the delivery. He only takes two. It, didn't, it went well in front of square. Uh, bounced, I think, appreciably in front of the square leg. And that's uh, a 50, 50 up. And 51 that is 50 50 up. Yep, 51 for two. Hildreth goes to 14. He's been bristling with intent as a chap. Yes. With his, now, this is interesting. I, I don't know who he is. A tall young fellow with a... <laughs> uh, dressed in blue and a Lancashire top comes running across the outfield and he's running from right to left with no intention whatsoever of heading towards the playing area he's not heading towards, he's now hopping back over the boundary edge, he's got one of those plastic bottles in his hand oh he's now giving it to um, Kyle Hogg um, in fact, he's strapping something to the back of his shirt, rather like a walkie-talkie or a microphone. Well, I don't know they're not mic'ing that, him up, are they? I feel like. <laughs> or they, he's giving them a bit of a rub down as well, by the looks of it. Yes, he's got some grease. He's done something to his lower back. Anyway, Proctor's on his way again, and he's looping in again with that extraordinary action of his, and that's outside the off stump. And uh, that's left alone by Compton, and there's no run. Yes, he We've was. Got, it was uh, Proctor there trundling in with this, this extraordinary action of his, very open action. It's a cross between, uh, as I say, David Capel and Malcolm Marshall. But no, uh, uh, Hogg, he rubbed his back with some fluid or some gel. He then rubbed his hand oh. on the ground. Sounds like that pain-killing gel that you can get. And he's gone off again. So there you go. Mm. So again, Proctor moves in. Fairly short run-up. Bundles in and runs, and that's off the inside edge of the bat, slightly away on the leg side. Miscued by Compton, who runs a quick second, having noticed that the ball was fumbled by that fielder at mid-on, who'd run across, who made a shot at the stumps and uh, hands on his head <laughs> with dismay, thinking that he had a chance of running uh, the batsman out. But I don't really think that there was any chance of that. Well, the bowler missed it, um, the fielder missed it, and the chap backing up the backer-upper The backer-upper, yeah. Yes, um, it was... Uh, when he just got to it in the end. So nearly four overthrows. <coughs> That's an example of what I was saying earlier, Ben. A fielder diving to try and get in front of the ball rather yeah. than catching it from, you know, stopping it from behind makes much more sense. Doesn't Indeed. It? Proctor again wheels in, and that's wide outside the off stump. And again, the batsman leaves alone, and uh, there's no run. Yes, I mean, it's, it's a difficult one because one gets accused of, you know, being as, I don't know, a stick in the mud or whatever. But sometimes, you know, if, it, if there's a certain way of doing things, there's no point in reinventing the wheel. And uh, another example is people that uh, bowlers that insist on taking uh, the ball in front of the stumps when there's a run out chance yes um, that's a, that's a very rather than waiting behind the stumps and they often hit the, the, the stumps with their hand before the ball gets to them as that uh, last delivery is left alone by Compton and there's no run outside the old stump but what gets me Ben is, is why why are these new things crept into the coaching mantra you know mm. I mean we were always brought out to believe that he's just standing behind the stumps and the chap throws he's meant to be throwing it into the hands of the fielder above the bales but of course if he hits the stumps he's got more chance of executing a run out 
out with a direct hit than if the chap is standing in the way, preventing the ball from striking the stumps. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's Proctor Bowles again, and again outside the old stump. And Compton just looking as if he would like to, to have a drive, and uh, but uh, doing the right thing and leaving it. Yeah. Yes, it is It is strange. I mean, quite why these, these different ideas come in and who's behind them, I one doesn't know whether it's a coach that wants yeah. to have a particularly individual style and make a big impact and somehow it catches on as a sort of fashionable thing to do. But, but I don't how, know. Can, how can fielding with one hand possibly be more secure than fielding with two? Well, of course, the other one is catching skies, whether you put your hands upwards or... Cupped, but anyway, that uh, next delivery is played beautifully by Compton. Bat and pad close together, and there's no run uh, again fielded by the bowler, Luke Proctor. But uh, that's the end of the over. You see, uh, Michael Vaughan dropped so many catches because he chose yeah. to catch vertical catches with his palms pointing outwards, and you can't yeah, see the ball yeah. into the hands. When you had the palms facing in, you can actually cradle the ball, you can embrace it and see it into the hands. I mean, it's very hard mm -hmm. catching a vertical ball with your palms facing outwards when you're catching blind, and, and cricketers do it today, and I cannot understand. I wish somebody listening to this commentary would come back to us and say, oh, the reason they do it is because of this. I've well, never if there's anybody it. on Twitter, I think you can get me on that, Ben Manning UK, B-E-N-M-A-N-N-I-N-G UK. Because Feel free to, to let us know because... Uh, it, it, we were always brought up to believe that the only time you catch a ball with a reverse cup is when it's flat and it's horizontal at your face. Of course, you have no option but to catch it that way. But mm. I've some of these modern techniques baffle me, and I'm a cricketer, not a professional cricketer, more's the pity, but I've played at league level and mm. I've played all mm. my life, and I do not understand why some of these coaching methods mm. have crept into mm. fielding and catching and so on. Anyway, it's Sergeant Mahmood resuming from the old pavilion end bowl to uh, James Hildreth, who uh, guides the ball very uh, purposefully down towards the third man region. He's a very square third man. <laughs> Takes a single. He's it very, very well, James. Very purposefully, mm. very positively. <coughs> he goes to 615. Uh, I knew you said Dennis Compton. Nick Compton, 16, 64 <laughs> for two. Um, umpire Bainton, rather stout looking figure. Um, a, a sort of Alan Lamb like figure, perhaps, if you've got David, David Kippel bowling at the other end. Martin Saggers, of course, the only, only playing first class cricket. Was it a year ago or two years ago, mm, Ben? Yes, yes. Yeah. Got himself short, fast tracked into the umpiring realm. I don't know how he achieved it that quickly. Anyway, Mahmood is bowling and it's short of a length. He's played in very well in defence with sufficient time for Compton to uh, embrace a single. He's batting with great authority. Now, the weather is getting brighter. I won't say we're dying of heat stroke in the commentary box, particularly given the fact that we have these horizontal wooden struts behind us, uh, yes. which allow the air to come in. How charming do, and how, yeah. how kind is someone to think of us in terms Blows of ventilation? Yes, uh, <laughs> blowing a gale, Chris uh, Gale. Chris and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> as um, uh. Mahmood. In the mood. In the mood. <laughs> <laughs> Bowls to uh, Hildreth. Oh, he fences Ooh. at it. And that was a horrible shot. It was, I yes. mean, he ended up guiding it almost um, inadvertently to the man in the gully region. That was a horrible shot. That was gore. Dear, Gosh, dear. <laughs> well, that's the sort of stroke that uh, if he'd edged it to first slip, it would be it'd be a hangable offence. I mean, it really was <laughs> dreadful stroke. Back far away from the body, kind of jabbing at the ball. Um, I mean, just luckily really was, made pretty good contact with the bat. Unless he, I, mean, I can understand him thinking there's a big enough gap which there is to guide the ball between second slip and gully. But anyway, let's see what happens now. As the next delivery from Mahmood is full in length, and it's a oh, Yorker oh, nice delivery. delivery, well dug out. Mm. And um, he is, do you know they have bowled? See, so Peter wasn't Peter Moore's uh, involved with them at one stage. I'm trying to. Uh, yeah. I think he still is. Very yes, much he so. is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yes, um, and some people might say that he sort of issued in a lot of England's results in recent times in a way because he brought the side together. So Mahmoud again bowling to Hildreth who drives and edges and he's got oh, and it's gone through four. Chance. That, chance. Chance. Uh, that was a, 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 an orthodox looking off drive um, caught the outside edge, thick outside edge, the chap at second slip, uh, who I shall identify in a second, splendid effort to dive for it, got more than just a fingertip or two to it and parried it, uh, but only insofar as it uh, continued on its merry way for four runs, crashing into the Clark Wilmot purple signpost mm. just to the right of the sea in Botham stands. That was a very dramatic moment, it a was. genuine let off. Um, mm. I mean, I, I admire, uh, and I do admire James's attempt to, uh, to be positive, but um, and I'm not saying it was the wrong shot to play. I think, it, I, I think actually it wasn't necessarily the the wrong shot to play, but it, merely the fact that he edged a ball that might otherwise have gone through extra cover for four. It went for four nonetheless, uh, but not in the way he intended his Mahmoud bowls, and that's on the legs, and James Hillworth plays it off the pads only as far as mid-on, and there is no mm. run, but it was a splendid effort. From it was. It was a, it was a full first, second slip there. dived across trying to catch it, but it was going pretty you know, fast rate of knots, and uh, Martin Saggers 
who you were talking about earlier. Yeah, of course he played played for England in was it 2004. He um, he's only 39. He's very young for an umpire and only retired a couple of years ago. So he's um, yes, like you say, he's been pretty much fast tracked. Surprised he's not uh, still playing for Kent. Because Kent are a wonderful county historically. The county of John Shepherd, Bob Woolmer, and a not, you know, mm -hmm. well, rather like Essex well, in the seventh. Brendan Nash, of course, got a hundred yep. yesterday. Famously arrived the other week at the uh, Kent uh, ground, and they wouldn't let him. Uh, used the car park. They thought he was someone there on a trial. And uh, he had to explain, no, I'm actually the overseas player. And uh, he was sat, it must have been very humiliating. Of course, the poor chap only six months ago was vice captain of the West Indies and found out that he'd been dropped as a player over the internet. Didn't even get told quite extraordinary. Person. So dre dreadfully, he's been treated dreadfully, really. And he's a fine player. Quite so extraordinary. One, one, uh, one hopes that he you know, doesn't take these... Well, he's, he seems to approach it in the right manner. He says it's only making him more determined, which is a marvellous mark of the man, really. Indeed it is. And it's 59 by 2, and we have spin for the first time in the innings. Simon Kerrigan, left arm. Uh, At last, I've been looking forward to... Yep, uh, left Kerrigan arm around the wicket, coming into bowl shortly, when he's set his field, uh, which at the moment looks like uh, we've got a man at uh, backward point, a man at deep cover, a man at mid-off, one slip... Long leg, mid-wicket, short leg, mid-on, mid-off, and uh, a shortish extra cover. Left arm bowling through the umpire, first delivery, and it's played defensively forward uh, by Nick Compton, and there is no run. Yes, Kent, a wonderful county. You mm -hmm. know, one always feels sorry for the likes of Rob Key not playing for England. Uh, Gerard yeah, Jones, uh, yeah. you know, still be, could still do a wonderful job if he were called upon. Um, Chris Savaray started out there as well, didn't he? Indeed, but he married yeah, Vanessa, of course, who came from Taunton, and then went back Indeed. to Kent as the next deliveries oh. played in defence by Compton. Uh, Wanted to go up for an LBW, didn't they, there, for some reason? Yeah, he was a long way forward. This is the other problem with the, I, the DRS. You know, you, there was a time where you could stretch half a mile down the track and not be given that. These days, you mm. still get given that, which is quite ludicrous. Uh, that won't happen at county level, I'm very happy to say. It's the next delivery, bowling through the umpire, left arm, and it's swept. Uh, that's Ooh. a shot that should be abolished. You know, he says a single to Compton, but, you know, he's playing a straight ball off middle stump with a cross bat, and it's a good-length delivery. You're just asking for trouble, you know. Yeah, this is the other is great a... modern obsession with the sweep shot. Mm. Why they can't simply drive the ball down the ground, we were always brought up to believe that if it's a good-length ball on middle stump, you play with a straight bat. But the, uh, we've seen so many people, particularly Andrew Strauss, looking an absolute chump getting out to... And they still do it. They still do it, and it, it well, just well, gets well, me very cross, it does. Yes. Anyway, Kerrigan it is, bowling this time to James Hildreth. Oh, that's oh he's gone! I didn't know. I thought he had a... Oh, I thought he bowled him. Bowled him. He went to uh, hit that over the top, over the um, mid-on fielder, the track, and yeah. uh, missed it, missed it, didn't make any contact, and it hit the pad and ballooned up, but it's going down legs, so they <laughs> couldn't couldn't go up for the LBW, he but uh, he he's lucky he got away with that. He half shimmied down the track. He was at some way out of his crease. He looked behind him, expecting the ball to strike the stumps, and he didn't. Next delivery, he sweeps, and he well, sweeps that's for well four. Played. That's well, four, he sweeps yeah. for four, mm. but again, it's across the line of a straight ball. Risky. Straight ball, yeah. Very risky. But, uh, it's Hildreth it's, again. Yeah, it's a lovely shot in terms of its, ex you know, the execution of it. I mean, went mm. hit off the meat of the bat, but, you know, it's... Well, I mean, the other day, uh, Mashal Prince was hit a couple of reverse sweeps for four, and, uh, which we, was we, surprising. We've hit the sort of Kevin Peterson era where people just say, well, that's the way I play. Yeah, reverse hooks next, I expect. <laughs> a, a coach's nightmare. As the next delivery swept again, and this time it's also gone for four. <laughs> mm, well, uh, one must admit, 